So in the last video, we installed an, a fresh installation of Laravel 5.4, got our asset pipeline built, and also added in the example view component that ships with Laravel. Now let's try to go build that interactive chat application using view components. One thing I like to do is to scaffold how I want this application to look using view components without trying to think too much into what actual components I will be building and what that will entail. I just want to write expressively how I want to use this component in the long run. So I think for sure I would want a chat log. Uh, that could be as simple as this. And I imagine that a chat log would contain many chat messages. So for this example, maybe we'll just stick chat message out and we can debug it there right in the root level. And of course, to add chat messages to chat logs, we'll probably also want something like a chat composer. And I'll leave that in there. What we can do is start building out these components individually, maybe just adding whatever HTML they need and simple interactivity, and then go from there. So if we refresh the page right now, uh, we won't actually see anything. And if we inspect and we look at the view inspector, view is going to warn us that these custom elements don't exist. That's because we haven't created them yet. So we can start by creating, let's say, the chat message component. Uh, I'm going to just drop in a new component here called chat message dot view. This syntax is really cool. Uh, I also have a view helper installed with Atom, and so I can just start typing template and it will kind of build out the entire scaffolding for me. So what do we imagine a chat message will look like? Well, um, we need to have a, a surrounding wrapper for the template that is a view requirement there has to be one child within the template but I would imagine there's probably something like a uh, message so I can do message text is here and there's probably an author as well so for now I'm just gonna stick the author in a small tag say author name of course we also need to register with this within the app JS file uh, just like the example component was being registered so I'm gonna just copy paste that and call it chat dash message that's how we'll be calling it in the markup but then also we'll be importing the actual view file chat message and let's let that compile and refresh okay awesome we have message text is here and author name I think that's pretty simple of course the power of view comes in when you start attaching data to uh, templating engine. So we'll want to return some data for this particular component. Um, I think we would probably want to call this message as a, a variable. And for now, let's just say user is the user. And we might change that later. But uh, And another thing to note here, when you're building out view components, the data object needs to be a function and not a uh, normal JavaScript object. There are reasons for that, but I don't know off the top of my head why. Uh, we will return a, an object in here, and I will say message is this is some message text, and the user can be John Doe. And we should see our JavaScript data fields being used within the template. Next up, let's build a place to put these chat messages. I think a new component could be built called chat log dot view. Again, I'll scaffold out this template. Uh, what does a chat log look like? Probably, and again, it has a wrapping outer element, but for the most part, it's pretty straightforward. It's just going to have a bunch of chat logs on the inside. So for now, I'm just going to stub out a bunch of chat logs here. And let's just put like three in a row. Uh, we need to register this as a component. I'm going to call it chat log. And we can let that compile. 
Oh, because I'm calling chat log within itself. That's silly. And let's try it again. So now we have four in a row. That's because I still have that example one in our markup, but we can get rid of the chat message from here for now. Finally, let's add a component for our chat composer. So we want to build something that lets us add messages to the chat log. So let's do that. I'm going to create a new component called chat composer. Following with our naming convention, I will do chat composer as a parent element. Uh, to keep it simple, let's just do a, a, an input. Uh, it can be a normal text input. You could also do text area, but I'm just going to keep it simple with text. Uh, placeholder could be something as simple as start typing your message. And then, of course, you want to have some sort of send button. So I will add a button. And uh, we are using Bootstrap because that comes with Laravel. I'm going to apply the BTN, BTN primary, and then I'll hit send there. Let's register that with our app, our last component. Yay. It's really amazing what you can do with just such little code with Vue, and it's incredibly powerful. And I will hit refresh. Okay. That's okay. Uh, it could be styled a little bit better to f maybe fill the whole window. Luckily, Flexbox is there to save the day. So let's go to Chat Composer and add some styles to our Chat Composer element. I want to just say Display Flex. And then the input inside the Chat Composer should uh, fill the space. So I'm going to do Flex 1 Auto. And I don't want my button to have rounded corners, so I'm going to do border radius 0. Let's see if that looks any better. Sweet. I think I'm happy with that for now. Uh, ideally, we'll like center that in the screen, but uh, we can call that good for now. So right now, um, it's just scaffolded out. Nothing is really happening. We don't have any JavaScript areas, but we would like to add some interactivity. In fact, I mean, of course, that's why we're using view. Uh, if you type something and hit enter, nothing happens. Click send, nothing happens. So let's start by uh, thinking about how our data is getting into the chat log. We have a chat log component with a number of arbitrary chat messages. And our data is living right now inside the chat message itself and it's just strings so I think it would be great to get this out of the chat message component and allow these strings to be set as properties on the component so if we move to chat log I think that would be a great place to store the messages and we can do that by creating a data method within the chat log and return let's say just the messages and it's going to be an array that needs to be an object here but uh, we'll have an array of messages pretty easy. Then instead of dumping these in arbitrarily, we can use one of them and take advantage of, layer, or of views v4 method. So we can say for message in messages, print this out. I will hit save now and let's see what that looks like. Okay, we have errors. Data functions must return an object. Sorry, I'm used to Ruby. Okay, we have two messages, but our data isn't getting through to the actual chat message component. So we want to pass message as a property. Uh, and you can do that by saying, you know, message is message. But that would uh, be a one-time data transfer that wouldn't be reactive. So what you can do is bind message. You can do like vbind message to message uh, or the shortcut message. And of course, if we do that and refresh, we're going to get, uh, again, nothing is updated because we're not sending it in as a property and because we're overriding it in the chat message with our own data. So we don't have any local data here in this chat message anymore. Uh, 
and we want to accept properties. So there is a props property within the data object and it's an array and we say what properties we want to accept. So we want to accept the message property. And finally, this is going to be referring to the message.message .message and the message.user. OK, so we have our data going through. Now, uh, how would we go about adding a new message to this list? Of course, this is a different component. And so this chat composer component needs to talk to the uh, chat log component eventually to add a new message to that log. Well, there are a number of ways to do this. Uh, we'll talk about one way. But first, let's, let's handle the, uh, the input. We will start by wiring up this text input to a, a view model. So that's called model binding. And that's going to want some data. So let's start up our, our data method here and return an object. Uh, we deal, we'll want like new message, or maybe call it message text. And that's going to be null by default uh, for v model um, equals message text. There might be a shortcut for that, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. So as long as we don't have any errors, I think we did that right. Another way we can check is by making message text not empty, default, and it should populate the value. There it is. Next, we want to handle, let's say when this button is clicked, we want to uh, do something with that. So uh, there's a uh, super easy event listener tag, and you can do at um, click, and that will let you pass in a method that you want to run. So let's say that we want to um, uh, send message on click, and of course we should define that under our methods property. And for now, let's just console log out message sent. So when I hit send, I see message sent. The nice thing about this is I can just reference the actual message with this dot message text because it's, again, reactively bound to that model. So there's our message. And uh, usually when you send a message, you want like the text to go away. It, you don't want it to persist. So this is uh, as simple as um, clearing out that message text and setting it to an empty string. All right, so emptied out, but we still got the message. Great. Now. You don't want to have to click the send button every time. You probably want to be able to hit enter. So view makes that very easy as well. You could say v on key down, uh, but that would handle every single keystroke. And we don't want to do that. We don't have to don't want to have to check those keystrokes manually. Luckily, view makes that really easy. You can do on view on v on key down dot enter because there's a nice little shortcut. So anytime a user hits enter in this field, I want to run a function. So I'm going to use this send message method. And it's even easier if we do the shortcut at key down enter. So let's try that out. Message enter nothing. Uh, maybe key up. There we go. So it sent our message. Awesome. Now how do we get this message to our chat log? So this is where um, event emitters and listeners within view come in real handy. So basically what we're going to say is wants Within the chat composer, uh, a, a message was sent. We want to e emit a, an event. Uh, so we can emit, using this.emit, a new event. We can call it um, sent. 
just to keep it simple or message sent. And then we can pass whatever data so we can just send this message text. Um, also at this point you'd probably want to send like the author maybe so I'm just gonna go ahead and build up the object that it's expecting I'll do message is this message text and then author for the time being let's let's call it um, just John Doe and we'll revisit this later so how do we grab a hold of this message sent uh, you can go to another component like a parent component uh, so in this case it would be the root component because this is uh, you know in the root scope and listen for an event like that on the actual child element where it was called so this is where we can come back with v on and then the name of the message and then pass a method to it so when a message is sent we want to do something we can say uh, add message so we'll run we'll fire off a method called add message when a message is sent let's take a look at what's happening now there is not so we've defined it the add message method but it has not been defined anywhere uh, and we probably want to define that on the root scope so we will come back here and define some methods and I'll call add message and I'm just gonna console log message added Cool. Message added was consoled out. And since we are here in the root scope, we probably need to handle our messages in here because now we're going to want to push this to an array, for example. So I'm just going to do what we did for our message prop inside the chat message and the chat log, and I'm just going to take that up one level. So I'm going to take our messages here and move them up to the root scope. So we can say data of course here it's an object not a function and then we can pass our uh, messages to the chat log we can bind messages to messages we can remove our data attribute once again from the chat log however we will want to add props we want to accept messages and now messages is going to pull from the messages property instead which is really neat let's just make sure that that worked before we go any further awesome it did so now that we are emitting an event on the root scope and listening for it here on the actual elements definition uh, we can define this add message method and actually do something because right now we're just logging it out so what we want to do is add to existing messages and we want to of course eventually persist to the database etc so to add to the existing messages it's probably as simple as doing this dot messages push and then whatever message was sent this comes with whatever data you've sent so I'm going to do message in here and uh, let's just hit save and try it out. Okay. Neat. It's uh, showing the hi, it's me, but it's not bringing in the user. Let's see what we might have done wrong. We have a message and a user. And from our composer, we are emitting message and author. So that's my fault. pretty neat so we're now we have an interactive um, chat room within view built with uh, simply three components and a couple of events so very simple to get started in the next video we're going to actually get started talking to Laravel persisting some of these matches messages to the database and creating a, a user login system luckily with Laravel it's very easy to do